let's talk immigration. What is it? And I'm seeing it starts at 60. Can I start earlier? Does it really have to start at 60? <laughs> no, look, I think uh, semigration uh, is a play on words um, between immigration and and uh, and sort of halfway there is semigration. So it means a move uh, with any. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it's a weekday, so that means we are talking everything property. We're talking investing, buying, selling. We're talking on how to manage your your property portfolio and uh, possibly increase it. And if you're looking to get into the market, how to do that, making sure that you do it right uh, and and maximizing it to the core. So if you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much for joining us. And for those joining us on the Twitter spaces, thank you so much to you as well. Hopefully you stay to the end of the conversation and you enjoy the conversation tonight so if you're a regular drop those green hearts and make sure you mark the register this is also the time to send that link to everybody and anybody you think is definitely going to um, enjoy the conversation and probably needs the information that we're talking about tonight so as usual, I have a guest who is going to give us amazing uh, insights about a not very popular topic. You know, tonight we're talking semigration after 60 and where most of our South African retirees are going. Where are they headed? Tonight I'm joined by Gus van der Speck, who is the CEO at Aview Properties. Gus, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much to me. Thank you uh, for having me on, on the show. It's always great to be here and uh, yeah, look forward to Hopefully, living up to your expectations there. No, definitely. Um, uh, let's talk semigration. I, I, I haven't heard the word. It's not really popular. Um, and it, it's, it seems to be happening because this is something that um, we are seeing happening in the property industry. Let's talk semigration. What is it? And I'm seeing it starts at 60. Can I start earlier? Does it really have to start at 60? <laughs> no, look, I think uh, semigration uh, is a play on words um, between immigration and and uh, and sort of halfway there is semigration. So it means a move uh, within your country um, to a different area to live in. And uh, I suppose uh, the big sort of semigration uh, event that has happened in probably the last 10 to 15 years in South Africa is the semigration of uh, people sort of moving towards coastal towns, so moving from Gauteng um, and uh, and other places sort of in the central uh, area of the country and moving to either sort of the Western Cape or uh, Northern um, uh, Natal. Uh, that's been sort of the two most popular trends over the last few years. So when people talk about semigration, they talk about getting out of sort of the big smoke of, of Johannesburg maybe and, and moving down to uh, a coastal town like um, Cape Town or Durban, uh, you know, uh, Hermanus, uh, there's sort of, sort of all sorts of uh, nodes that people move down to. And uh, and I think this is just people looking for a lifestyle choice or lifestyle living in a different type of place. Sure. And would you say that um, with the movements that we've been having in the property industry in terms of COVID-19 happening, the remote working and the moving, whether into uh, into the cities or out yeah. of the cities, has helped or has spiked yeah. up immigration? So, look, yeah, I think uh, obviously um, immigration has been um, driven, you know, in, in the past, maybe more, uh, uh, you know, people making the choice between Johannesburg and Cape Town, for example, um, as a lifestyle, a lifestyle decision. Uh, maybe sort of uh, the uh, because of the Western Capes been, seem to be a better run and, you know, robots work and and uh, and service delivery, that sort of thing is, is better. People have seen a perceived sort of uh, benefit to, to living in, in places uh, like Cape Town, for example. But I think immigration is something bigger than that. It's been happening... Uh, Sort of all over. Uh, there's definitely a move up to um, uh, places like uh, Belito, that sort of thing, up in, uh, in you know north of Durban, um, and then also maybe a little bit more locally. You know, people moving from Johannesburg to Clarence, you know, for example, um, you know, features a, a very nice lifestyle, and especially as people have been able to move away from uh, being office bound uh, like they were before. Uh, they can now live in, 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 they call them Zoom towns, which, which is a, 
uh, basically a, um, a, a town where you can log in. It's got good uh, internet, but uh, you, you're living a, a lifestyle-based choice uh, rather than uh, an economic need to be in a place. So, immigration is is a is a sort of a, a quite a loose term for 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 what people are. are, are doing sort of nationally moving around uh, but there are some very key trends of places that, where people are moving for 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 um, probably the more uh, more sort of uh, lifestyle type type decisions and and maybe a perception that uh, that some cities are better run than others and, and that sort of thing mm. um, we specifically want to zoom into um retired people retiring people or retired people people around the ages of 60 and plus so um when they're moving from from like the cities or moving from um even south africa and moving internationally are we seeing a specific mm. spike in them moving into um specifically um homes or not not necessarily homes because i know now they're called like retirement developments and retirement villages and it's not like homes you know back in the day you used to be called homes yeah where they yeah have, they've got well they used to be called uh, old age homes and uh yeah. Yeah, yeah then they changed more to uh, retirement development and now uh, nowadays we refer to them as lifestyle developments for yeah. over 65s or over 60s or or uh, you know that sort of thing but you know just to go back to your sort of um uh, immigration is very different from immigration where immigration is where mm. people um, move to to go overseas for example uh, to you know we live in australia the uk that sort of thing where immigration is very local um but uh, the, the the trends of 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 where people are going um you know obviously there's a lot of uh, we were talking earlier about sort of the bra chat and 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 where people are moving sort of internationally is a very different choice from uh, from from the local the local move uh, the international move we've sort of found is is a lot more younger people uh, that are looking to you know maybe put down roots somewhere else i think there's a lot of opportunity in the world um you know for uh, people that come out of uh, university or their young professionals um uh, before they're married with children to 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 make a, a sort of an international move to somewhere and uh, a lot of people i know uh, that have done that have, have gone and come back so I don't know if you still count it as immigration then, but it's sort of seeing what the rest of the world is like. Whereas locally, we're talking about immigration is is a decision that people make to live somewhere else for uh, very specific lifestyle reasons, um, and uh, and I think that that really is is kind of a uh, more of a long term focal sort of decision that that families make, uh, and certainly uh, older people, retirees are making. Um, you know, there's a is a, um, a look at at where they want to spend sort of the the good years of their lives, um, and uh, and I think that that decision is is often influenced by you know being in a maybe a coastal town or being somewhere that's a little bit safer or you know uh, living near family uh, that have that have emigrated uh, you know so those drivers are there. Um, I think obviously the economic hub of of somewhere like Gauteng uh, uh, draws people in with jobs and and work experience. But as soon as they are able to make a decision of living maybe a bit more independently away from their jobs, uh, then they decide then they decide to make more of a lifestyle based decision and and uh, in where they're going to end up living. Sure. So you're the CEO at Aview um, Properties. Talk to us about some of the trends that you guys have seen um, and maybe some of the specialities that you guys offer to people who would like to either semi-grade or re re retired people who would like to then move into the coastals or even move internationally. What are some of the things that um, you, the trends that you guys have seen and some of the spe uh, specialities that you guys offer? So look, we, we are very much a, a specific offering and, and in no way um, put a comment too, with too much authority on on sort of international immigration trends, um, but uh, um, certainly in this immigration um, uh, area, we've got a, a development in, in Cape Town, uh, in Kenilworth, called Witham Estate. It's a retirement um, retirement or lifestyle estate for over sixty fives, um, and this is very much a, a product that's that's aimed at that uh, that market of people who are looking for um, a, a central place where they can live and socialize in a sort of a, a contained environment. Um, it's an, an environment that provides safety, 
um, security. Uh, the food uh, is is very much a um, come to standard restaurant uh, and have food, and and then obviously the medical uh, side of things where they've got carers and and that sort of thing to look after them. So, you know, the difference between a block of flats, for example, and a retirement development uh, is that you know one's got a medical sort of side to it where you get care and specifically caters for uh, an aging uh, sort of population of, of residents whereas a block of flats is just a sectional title of block of flats where where anyone can live and and it's managed by a body corporate whereas a retirement development is centrally managed by um, a developer and and they look after the the needs of the people that are that are living there going forward and uh, so the, the trends that we're seeing um, in this uh, are very made, much based around uh, people following their children, um, especially, you know, you're getting uh, sort of early 70s. Um, and uh, we've seen uh, with a number of our clients, um, their kids are, are living in Cape Town um, and they uh, then semigrate down to the Western Cape uh, and, and buy a property in Witham and, and their kids live down the road. And there's a whole sort of family unit that, that, that gets built uh, and, and put together there. Um, but we're seeing a lot of this also um, uh, from sort of, seems like everyone's moving away from Gauteng, but I don't think that's the case. You know, it's, it's a lot of people make their wealth or, or they um, experience, get the work experience that allows them to travel somewhere else and then they leave. But Gauteng is a very much a, a economic hub that that, uh, that people are drawn to for, for work. But uh, when people do have the opportunity to move away, sometimes they make that decision to, to go other places. And even places like White River, which are, you know, I think in Pumalanga, Clarence, uh, are very popular areas. People go and live down in Plet and Asna and obviously Kenton on Sea. Uh, Kenton on Sea is, I think, half the population is over 65. So, you know, it's a town where people feel comfortable to go and spend their sort of golden years. Um, so so the movement is is very much based around that lifestyle decision. But uh, what we find a lot of it is to do with family and, and being near their, their sort of loved ones. And their loved ones have moved to Cape or Clarence or wherever, then then they often follow them, and and I think that drives a lot of this sort of this immigration over sixty fives. We find that not a lot of uh, people over sixty five want to immigrate um, because, uh, firstly, you know if their family is living in South Africa, it's a very difficult decision to make. Um, some people have been living overseas for you know sort of half year, half half there whatever that may be, um, and and they might decide to maybe start spending a bit more time there. But I think certainly as people um, do get a bit older, um, they decide to to sort of make South Africa their base um, and, and and spend a lot more time there. So uh, even people with the means who, who can afford to immigrate, and there's not many of them nowadays, um, then uh, they, they still make the decision to stay here because, uh, you know, we live in a beautiful country. We've got amazing people. Um, there's, you know, obviously everywhere has got their problems, but, uh, but, but why would you want to leave a place like this? So uh, I think, uh, we, we, we're not seeing that immigration, uh, pull in over 65s, um, as much as we see it in, in, in the younger people. Sure. No, definitely. Um, I'm just going to take, um, the, the poll quickly and, uh, thank you so much to everybody who, who participated in the poll today. Um, we spoke. We asked you a question and says, if you're reaching your 60s and you're planning to retire, where would you like to stay? <laughs> and I think for the, the conversation we're having tonight is going to be very, very skewed because the first one on the list says, someone says, Western Cape, I want to be closer to the beach. The second one says Eastern Cape because of the temperature and the climate. And someone said internationally, I don't want to retire in South Africa. <laughs> I really, really wonder why. <laughs> um, we are... Uh, Swanky Sitole says Eastern Cape, um, uh, Western Cape rather, by the beach with the view and the breeze every single morning. Gabza Montong says internationally, I don't want to retire in South Africa, maybe Saudi Arabia. Hmm, okay, that is a quite an interesting choice. I think if I were to, to, my, to, to, to retire, I would probably still stay in South Africa because of, you know, the culture we have here is beautiful. But if I was to throw this question to you and not being biased now, where would you go if you were to retire? Um, yeah, look, I mean, I'm a Durban boy originally. So, uh, you know, I grew up uh, near the sea, but uh, I've always loved the Cape. Um, and, and so I would have to probably choose 
and I know I'm going to sound biased, but uh, I choose Cape Town to retire to. It's a beautiful city. Um, I love living here. There's so much to do. Um, it's really a really a fantastic place to live. Um, and every day, I mean, the beauty and the natural sort of beauty around you is, is phenomenal. So um, I, I, as much as I love the rest of the country, I just, if I had to choose somewhere to spend, um, you know, most of my time, it would be here. Yeah. Obviously, internationally is, is a different option, a different choice. I mean, I lived in London for 10 years and I really enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, when people say they want to retire somewhere else, uh, often they haven't been somewhere else. And I've been around the world. I've seen, you know, a, a, so, a few places and, and South Africa is pretty amazing. Sure. No, no, no. Really, really, um, I, I, I see. I see. I would definitely do the same. Um, let's let's talk about um, when when this movement happens or this immigration happens. Um, do you see um, a movement of people going into these um, or, or moving from from one city to another, and they are buying the property, or they are merely just renting it because it may just be short term leases? Or how, how do how does it mm. operate? Does it do you find that there are there's more purchases than rentals, and how does it work for you guys? Uh, look, I mean, so we sell our properties with, uh, on a life right, which is a very um, unique uh, and different type of sale. So it's not actually even sale, uh, it's a loan between two people. But um, South Africans like to own their property. It's uh, something that is instilled in all of us, um, you know, from, from I don't know how and when, but... Uh, uh, renting a house is, is not first choice for most people. So um, we don't see a lot of rental um, uh, deals sort of happening. But uh, but uh, yeah, I mean the, the the purchase of property is something that uh, that's very ingrained in, in us as a nation of people. So yeah, uh, I would say not so much rental, uh, uh, especially uh, the sort of security of tenure is that you only have the right to live in that place for as long as the lease. So people worry about what happens at the end of the lease or where am I going to go next? And, you know, you can imagine uh, at 65, those kind of concerns become uh, quite overwhelming. So people like to know that they've got a place to live. And I suppose that in many ways, a life right agreement is a form of long rental contract. So, um, you know, uh, if we look at it from that sort of sense, um, you know, probably a bit the best of both worlds. You've got the security of tenure for for taking uh, taking your yourself forward in, in, in a contract, but uh, you don't have the responsibility of owning the property. So maybe that's to answer my question in a roundabout way. Uh, maybe that's the future of where the 65s market is, is a, is a type of rental contract mm. um, where you don't have encumbrances like transfer duty and VAT and, and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's a very uh, different type of, 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 uh, of, of form of tenure over a property. Yes, no, definitely, definitely. And thank you so much for, for giving us this information because this may just be someone's way of being happy and, you know, um, opening that, that can of happiness and really enjoying their retirement. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Gus, and really, really Pleasure. appreciate um, you sharing this information with us. Thank you Have very much to me. Thank you, Woldy. Thanks to me. Have a good evening. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much. Cheers. And just like that, we reach the end of, our, of tonight's episode where we are talking semi-migration for those who are above 60 years old. Um, people are moving, you know, people are moving, life is moving. And as Gus said, make sure that you are happy. That is the most important thing. So if you want to be inland, if you want to be close to the coast, make sure that you, you enjoy that retirement because it might, it's, you've been working your whole life. So now this is the time for you to kick back those shoes and relax. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And if you are one of those people who are semi-migrating, do remember that you can still catch us from anywhere you are in the world right here every weeknight 7 p.m on the private property podcast have a good evening mm -hmm.